Hey yo, it's Rowan here. Um, I, I was thinking I might go on another sort of uh, book adjacent adventure. I've got some uh, errands to run, some time to kill before I go see some people tonight. Um, I'm gonna be playing some video games. Uh, but I had so much fun doing the Little Libraries journey and putting that together that I thought I'd do another one. This one I'll be, I've got to run to the library and then I'm um, going to be hitting up some thrift stores, maybe a uh, actual bookstore or as well, see where, uh, you know, the world takes me. Uh, I've got like three and a half hours to kill, so uh, see if we can make it work. I'm going to bring uh, Stoner with me in case I just get bored and run out of time so I can try and finish this. I've got like a hundred pages left, not even a hundred pages left, so I, I need to burn through this. So yeah, let's go. What's up? Check out my sweet sunglasses. First stop is the library. I've got some stuff to return, some stuff to pick up. Let's go and check it out. All right, I got my stack to add to the humongous stack at home. Ugh. Next, we're gonna go off to Goodwill. Two-faced bitches never lie, therefore I never lie. Dungeons and Dragons and Triangle for tonight. All right, we uh, are at Goodwill. The uh, the Goodwill in Hopkins, Minnesota, is notorious for its road construction, and uh, we uh, ran into a dead end street, and I didn't feel like getting around it. So we're in St. Louis Park at the Goodwill. Let's go in and see if we can find anything. No fucking way. This is a friend of mine from high school. Got some NYRB. Got another person I know. This was my advisor in college. So funny. These books aren't organized in any way. So it's uh, kind of hard to shop. Alright, I got a big stack at this Goodwill. It's pretty impressive. Um, let's go over them individually later, but now I'm going to make my way down pretty close to here is Half Price Books, the most popular one in the cities actually, um, and they have a great clearance section, so let's go check that out. Spinal Tap. This store has a great clearance section. Let's go check that out first. Got some Michael Shabon up here. I'll probably leave. I just paid full price for this at a different half price a couple days ago. Makes me angry. Here's a great book I read recently. All right.
right. Uh, that was half price. This has all been stuff that's relatively close within 10 minute non-highway driving of my house. Now we're going to start making our way up north because uh, I'm going to be spending the night, the evening, chilling at my, my, my buddy's house. He lives in North Minneapolis. So we're going to be making our way north up through, uh, up through Golden Valley and uh, we're going to check out a couple of thrift stores up there and see what we can find. Just good times Bitch, I'm wasted Just kidding, I'm high We're gonna go to a show And then come home and probably die They actually, actually alphabetize their fiction here. They got some 100 Years of Solitude. There's Cloud Atlas. Good stuff. Blue Sky. Credit already, though. Another big fuck off stack. See, I can't even barely pick it up. Ugh. And most of them came from the. Uh, 50% off section, red tags were half off. Uh, all of them but one came from there, so that's great. We're just gonna head up Winnetka Avenue here to another thrift store. After that, I don't know what I'm gonna do. I have to reassess, so uh, here we go. All right, we're at Unique. Eat shit. Boy, a load of bullshit. I wanted to complain more, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of people around, so I'm talking to myself. Not the most, uh, cool thing to do, but $3.99 for all the paperbacks? $3.99. It's a thrift store. They had that Celeste Ing book. I thought about it, but... And then $7.99 for Sin City? Like, come the fuck on. Uh, this thrift store used to be pretty sweet. Now, uh, not so much. I'm gonna need to, uh, take a minute to decide what I'm gonna do next. So, uh, hang on. Alright. Um, there's no real thrift stores or bookstores around this side of town yet left. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go find something to eat and then post up at a park and try and finish Stoner. Let's go. I got a sandwich and I got some Sprite, but the goddamn lid won't stay on the fucking pop and I spilled it all over myself in the parking lot, pissing myself off. Let's eat. I'll make a $20 bet. Adam won't get his lunchbox back. I took it an hour ago. He's crying in the snow. I'll never let him go. Uh, 
decided to go over to Northeast Minneapolis, drove down Broadway through North, uh, check out Eat My Words Books. I've been here a couple times before, but I haven't been here in a long time, so uh, let's go see what it's all about. Picked up a couple books there. I'm gonna head over to All Systems Go, which is a store that sells board games, video games, D&D books, movies, pretty much all the goodies that aren't books that I love. I have a lot of store credit there, so uh, word on the street is they may have a copy of Earthbound for the Super Nintendo. Alright, I picked up a game, so uh, that was a success, but they did not have Earthbound, unfortunately, uh, they sold it already. I had thought about putting it on hold, but I, it was like $300, and I was, I, I didn't want to have buyer's remorse, oh well. Uh, I'm gonna head over to my buddy's house now, so uh, this is it for shopping. When I get home, we can go through I, the big, big pile of shit that I bought, and we can talk about what I got because I some of you you saw some of it as I was pulling it off the shelves, but not all of it. All right. Black hair, swimming in my head. Black hair, it's bigger than death. I'm home. Let's go through what I got. First, let's get this out of the way. I got Everdell. Um, I know this is a book channel, uh, but I love board games. This is one that's been on my radar for a long time. Look at all these awards that this game has won. Just so many. Um, it, it's supposed to be great. It's got a big cardboard tree. Up first... White Teeth by Zadie Smith. Um, this is a book that I owned for 10 years and never read. I saw Zadie Smith give lecture at the U of M when I was in college with my writing workshop. We, uh, we were across the, the river at Augsburg, but we, uh, we snuck in to see her speak. Um, this is about uh, a couple of different families in London... Uh, of immigrant families and uh, snakes and how they sort of collide together and 
I mean, it's it's you know it's considered one of the best books of the 21st century. Um, it's her first book. I'm excited to read it someday. Next, uh, I'm not much of a nonfiction guy, but Under the Banner of Heaven. Um, I like John Krakauer. I read Into Thin Air a number of years ago and enjoyed it greatly. And this, uh, not only do I want to read it because I like John Krakauer, but uh, also it's uh, about m Mormonism, which is something that I have interest in. It's a a double narrative about um, the early days of the Mormon Church, as well as a story, a true crime story, about a double murder uh, of Mormons that happened in the 80s. Miss Lonely Hearts and the Day of the Locust by Nathaniel West. This is a book that I read. Um, I read Miss Lonely Hearts. When I was in college, uh, in Stephen Eric Clark's uh, class, Literature of the Grotesque, which was a great class, um, I enjoyed it greatly. I uh, have always wanted to read more uh, Nathaniel West. I'll probably reread Miss Lonely Hearts because I, you know, I don't remember that much about it. It's been a few years. This was in like 2013, I want to say. Gilead by Marilyn Robinson. This is one, another one that I owned for many, many years and never read. Uh, this is uh, won the Pulitzer, you know, many years ago, back when it came out, 2004. Um, this is the first part of a trilogy. Um, it takes place in Iowa. Next, Empire Falls by Richard Russo, another book that won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, this is Richard Russo's most popular book. Uh, it's kind of a fat boy. It's like almost 500 pages long. Russo is, you know, widely regarded. Um, I, My ex at one time owned this book, and I remember reading the opening few pages and, and, and liking it. So uh, up next, this uh, kind of tattered copy of The Sotweed Factor by John Barth. John Barth is uh, one of the uh, more unknown and forgotten uh, purveyors of early uh, postmodernism. This uh, is his considered to be his best book. It's it's pretty humongous. It's uh, 819 pages long. I again owned this for many years and got rid of it, but I wanted to get it again. So I did. They had uh, at at um, Eat Your Words. Uh, they had like a set of like six Barth hardcovers, including this one and Giles Goat Boy, but none of them had dust jackets. They were selling it as a set, all six for fifty bucks. Pretty cool. Next, the other thing I got at uh, Eat Your Words, C by Tom McCarthy. Um, this is a book that's been on my radar since it came out in like 2010 yep it's uh it's synopsis from the jacket sounds almost pinchonian uh adventures through world war one and egypt and secret societies and I've heard that it's uh, it's it's pretty interesting, weird. So I'm um, definitely excited to check that out. Next, for the relief of unbearable urge urges, stories by Nathan Englander. Um, I read the uh, title story of this collection in that same fiction workshop with Stephen Clark, where we saw Zadie Smith speak. Um, if memory serves, it's a that story is about um, a Jewish man going to his rabbi for advice about masturbation, and it was very funny. Uh, so I saw this and thought, yeah, I should. You know, I love I love stories. I love short stories. So pick that up. Next, I got this one at half price. This is the only thing I got. Dead Astronauts by Jeff Vandermeer. Um, this is a sequel to Born. Uh, I don't think it's plot wise a sequel, but it takes place in the same. Uh, universe 
as Born. Born was a book that I read like half of when it came out and liked it but never finished it, so I'll definitely have to finish that and get to this. Look at how pretty this cover is too. There's some sticky shit on the on the dust jacket, which is unfortunate. I'll have to maybe get some goo gone or something to take to that. This is how you lose her. By Juno Diaz. Uh, this is another story collection. I just recently picked up, uh, I talked and talked about in a haul video that I had picked up uh, Oscar Wow. Recently, I tried to read Oscar Wow back when it came out and didn't like it and never finished it. But enough people have sort of impressed upon me how much they love that book in the time since that I feel like I might have just not been in the right place to enjoy it. So I bought it again, hoping that I will change my mind on it. And I, you know, this was a dollar, so. Why not? Next one that I, I already own a copy of, but I don't know where my copy of it is. So, uh, I bought it anyways. This is Nin by Cass Daglish. Uh, Cass was my advisor in college. Um, this is one of her novels. It's about a feminist poet whose mother uh, dies. Her mother is a, a linguist of, uh, like, ancient... Uh, women's writers, I believe, and she goes on this sort of quixotic journey to discover more about her her mother's scholarly legacy. Um, Cass is an awesome person, uh, so I'm very happy to own that. Goodbye Columbus by Philip Roth. This is one of his more popular, more well-regarded uh, books. I mean, all of them are generally well-regarded, but this, you know, he, he wrote a lot of books. This is one of the more popular ones. This is his debut. Oh, I didn't know this. It's a novella with five short stories that are all connected. I didn't know that. Next, Tinkers by Paul Harding. Uh, this is another book that won the Pulitzer Prize. Um, there was kind of an upset the year that it won. It's a it's a slight little thing. It's been not even 200 pages long, and it's about uh, an old man who's dying, and sort of going through his memories in a sort of like very hallucinatory style, a very stream of consciousness. From what I've heard, uh, interesting. Yeah. Then, Grendel by John Gardner. Um, I've never read any of John Gardner's fiction, which is silly because I have read his book about writing fiction, which is a fantastic book. It's probably my favorite book about writing that I've ever read. Um, this, of course, is about Grendel from Beowulf. Um, it's considered to be like a modern classic. I've, I've heard nothing but good things about it, so... Found in NYRB. A High Wind in Jamaica by Richard Hughes. This is a... Uh, I'd never heard of this before I found it. Just, uh, jumped out at me because it was an NYRB. And generally speaking, they... Uh, you know, put out good stuff. Nin late 19th century Jamaica. A Tale of Seduction and Betrayal. A classic of 20th century literature. Oh, it's on the Modern Library's uh, 100 Best Novels of the 20th Century list. Um, yeah. So that was everything that I bought. Um, quite a bit. But then I also went to the library. Auto Portrait and Suicide by Edward LeVay. Um, these come off of uh, a video recommendation from uh, Paper Bird, which is a fantastic channel. Um, he has a style unlike anybody else on BookTube, and he has great taste, um, and he has very, he's very funny, and uh, has interesting things to say. So these are both very short uh, little novellas that are apparently very dark and uh, very sort of psychological. Um, they sounded right up my alley. Definitely going to get to these sooner rather than later because they're both so short. 
one's like 115 pages, the other one's like 130, so they'll be going on the top of that giant pile. Next we got a couple of poetry collections. Um, Fantasia for the Man in Blue by Tommy, Tommy Blount. Tommy with, a, with an E at the end. I don't know if it's pronounced differently. Um, I don't know anything about this. And uh, Borderland Apocrypha by Anthony Cody. This is an annoyingly shaped book. Um, again, I don't know anything about it. looks pretty... Uh, the formatting is very all over the place in this. Uh, there you go. So yeah, I'd been checking out poetry collections, and so there's a couple more. Next, um, I don't even remember wh how this came onto my radar, um, but this is a story collection from uh, Barry Hanna Airships. Uh, this is an older book, 1978. Yeah, I don't know anything about it uh, other than that it's a story collection, so we'll see. And finally, uh, I wanted to talk ab about this just a little bit. Um, I've been since, like, d December, winter, reading Berserk, the manga by Kentaro Miura. And I am uh, a good way through it, a um, little less than halfway through it. Um, and for those that don't know, uh, Kentaro Miura passed away uh, on the 6th of May, but we just found out about it a couple days ago. Uh, he started working on Berserk when he was 23, it was when he started publishing Berserk. And um, he's been working on it since, uh, since 1989, and he leaves it unfinished, uh, which is just absolutely tragic uh, to work on something for that long and, and leave it unfinished. Um, it is near, near finished, and uh, there's been a lot of talk, and I'm sure that it, it will come true, that it will be finished, uh, because he, he knew where it was going, the ending was planned out. And he had, like, understudies and stuff who will probably finish it for him. It still, you know, won't be the same. But anyways, I, uh, I hadn't read any Berserk in, like, a month. Um, but that uh, occurrence, Mira passing away, made me be like, oh, I need to pick that up again. So I got volumes 15 and 16, uh for Berserk, that's where I'm at, I'm on volume 15 out of 40, they're at 40 right now, um, the only manga I've ever seen that's got parental advisory stickers on it, and who oh boy, are they, uh, not kidding, these books are extremely graphic, um, and awesome, so yeah, that was my, uh, that was my day, I had a fun time, we uh, hung out and played some Super Mario Strikers for the GameCube. Uh, beat the Bowser tournament. We won the Bowser Cup. And we are the champions! <laughs> so yeah. Um, these, uh, these vlogs are fun to do. Um, I enjoy making them. If you uh, enjoy watching them, throw me a comment. Let me let me know. Uh, yeah, that's all for now. Uh, take it easy.